There is a logo that is up there on the screen. You see it is DraftKings. It's as beautiful. It's as nice. And we like them a lot. Okay? And they like you a lot. Because they are the top rated sports booking app in the U.S. The way that we like to work. And on top of that, they are safe. They are secure. And they are reliable, Deke. There is nothing better. When you hit on that parlay, the same game parlay too. Or, you know, when you just have that one-off, you just feel good about this prop bet. You're like, man, I think that my dog going to throw a tighty today. Sometimes it just is like that. And DraftKings give you those opportunities. But more importantly, they give you a promo code. And that promo code is Moats. You use that. When you make that first deposit of $5, you're going to get a smooth $200 in Draft. Kings deposit money. And that is a great situation because you get to use that money to go out there and potentially make more money. It's a good situation. It's like a win win. You catch my drift? 100%. But Deke, I also know at times some people go past 100% and they're not able to turn that switch off. It stays on for too long. Mm-hmm. Well, when those people go through those experiences, sometimes you have to ask yourself if you or someone you may know has a gambling problem. They might need some crisis counseling. Shoot, Deke, they might even need referral services. Now, if they're living in New York, on the screen right now, there is a certain number that they could call or text for my New Yorkers. New York, New York. But for everybody else, the number that you need to call is 1-800-GAMBLER. I said a 1-800-GAMBLER. James Panzarello, going consecutive three and outs like that in the second half made our defense tired. Mm-hmm. Three legitimate points in the second half. What y'all think was the problem? Yeah, um, offensively, part of it was the adjustments. Um, I don't think that we did enough to protect our tackles. And I also don't think we did enough um, of the execution part from the quarterback and the receivers consistently enough in the second half. When you look at the pressure that they were getting, some of that is just... I don't want to say like arrogance, but it's just like, why won't you help your tackles out? It got to a point where we all knew that Dan Moore could not block Trey Hendrickson, right? We kind of got that feeling about midway through the third. It was like, yo, this dude is, he's picking it up. Then the fourth quarter end is like, all right, dude, he's really picking it up. We never made the adjustment of a line and a tight end in that area, having a running back chip him, sliding or anything. Whereas in contrast, you talk about the Cincinnati Bengals, and that's exactly what they did. They would have Samaji P. Ryan run directly off of Jonah Williams' shoulder, so that way Alex Highsmith either had to get super wide or had to come down the middle. They would align Hayden Hurst in the C-gap area, and at times he would put two hands on T.J. Watt and delay his release just to keep T.J. from having a free rush. Or he would line up with about a yard and a half from the tackle from Lyle Collins just to make TJ have to decide, do I want to be super tight or super wide? Little adjustments like that. It's interesting you say all that because it didn't really feel like TJ had that good of a game. Yeah, but those are the little adjustments that kept the impact out. And even with him not having that much of an impact, he still had a pick that put us in possession. What, half a sack? I don't know. Did they give that fully to Highsmith? He had a half a sack, half a sack, half a sack in the interception in the third that still set us up on a short field. And that's even with him having a quote unquote quiet game. Think about that. Five five tackles, a half a sack, and a pick. And we're like, ah, TJ, he wasn't even doing nothing today. That's productivity, man. That's crazy. But that's the standard that he is set, and we are grateful for that. But even with that, part of that, like I said, was on the Bengals. And I also think that their offensive line played a lot better. I thought, Yeah, I was Bengals, really surprised. I thought the Bengals really won surprised. the line of scrimmage in the second half. The Bengals' offense line and D-line, I thought they were just better in the second half than our offense line and defense line. It's crazy to say that, especially knowing, you know, the Bengals and how we view their line. But I definitely thought in the second half they just they won the line of scrimmage more consistently, man. They were able to get movement, and that's where they were able to run the ball at times. And then um, for them on uh, when we were on offense, like we said, we weren't protecting enough. You know, you start seeing those guys just really starting to create havoc. 